Um, so in, in the book, in, you know, Innovate the Next, um, I say that, um, you know, in, innovations happen in, 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 in sort of in two ranges. Uh, penicillin, for example, they discovered materially, they discovered a new material, right? Uh, which was what which wasn't there before so it can happen on a material level when you discover oh here's this material um you think of all the different minerals gold uh, iron materially they are, they are different when they were discovered they, they, I mean, they can more or less have the same function meaning to build uh, solid structures but materially they're different uh, gold doesn't it doesn't, uh, is it what, is it rust? Like it doesn't, like you, you can't, it, it doesn't rust. So maybe that's materially what, what it is. And then um, think of Airbnb. Uh, it was made, uh, I just I forgot the year. But when it was made, the material to make uh, Airbnb was there. It's just a matter of coding. So unlike penicillin, it was like a fresh discovery materially. But in Airbnb, something like it necessarily didn't exist. Uh, it might have existed in smaller slide forms, but uh, how they made Airbnb, uh, it wasn't like discovering new material. They were just taking coding that's there, and then the whole concept of booking online. Maybe the, the, a new concept then was turning houses into BNBs, houses that were typically not a BNB, and then anyone could just go register there, and then you can rent out your your house. So it either, either happens on a material level, or a, I call it a proprietary level. Uh, which was which is what Airbnb I would say falls in that in that in that category. So on a material level, those sort of things I think they are more usually they're discovered by sort of scientists or people who are really you know scientific kind of, and maybe the rest of us then there are other things that we can just proprietarily uh, discover. I think maybe a bit of questions there just to you know. <laughs> Uh, get the, the context in. Thank you so, so much. Uh, anyone yeah. with some <laughs> questions? There's a plethora of knowledge that I'm gaining from here. I don't know about you. Yeah. Um, is there anyone who would like to perhaps unpack a point or make a point? Why don't you all raise your hands up? all at once <laughs> or perhaps uh, then you can continue and just further engage uh yeah so you know and zulu will say you know still putting <laughs> their yeah sure together. yeah um so um another thing that i i, I like explaining so I, i've created or rather kind of like I've, I've noted down i call it factors that enable um the success of a product using the adjacent possible so i, I explained the adjacent possible Saying that uh, again, another maybe just give another context of it. Um, when internet was created, already there was banking, but the two things existing simultaneously, internet banking was a, an adjacent possible. Before it was created, it was an adjacent possible. Um, what's the other one? YouTube. Um, I think it was uh, founded in two thousand and four, right? So there was before YouTube. There was, there was internet before. And then there was video. Video had existed way before the internet existed. So, but those things just existing, video streaming was possible. Uh, obviously, YouTube is not is not really the first. There are many others that came in different sort of context, but it was the one that was uh, the most successful. Now, the factor that something becomes for, for uh, possible is that okay. In 2004, there were already over a billion people using the internet. And then video had existed before. Already millions of people were using it, right? So by merely creating a video streaming um, uh, utility, which is or rather platform, um, you've got on the one end, there are millions of people who watch video, which is on CDs, which is on DVDs. And then you've got already over, uh, maybe it's a, it was a billion people who were watching um broadcast television in many forms on dvd on 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 uh, what do you call it on bro broadcast tv so you could say also if over maybe billions of people are watching that and then you bring the phenomena that is the internet which is like kind of like the baby on the block um when you create such a platform it's easier for it to um get traction because already 
lots and lots of people are using it on on both ends for for example in like i think in the early 90s maybe 91 92 they, i think the world wide web went on uh, um went online i think it's 1991 so then around then it was just slightly less than two to three million people using the internet had youtube maybe came out in 1993 there wouldn't have been people uh, a billion people using it as um they were using it in 2004 so again um the concept is that platforms take a longer time to to get to get traction in, they okay maybe i'm i'm confusing everyone i'll, I'll go back let me uh, first settle the youtube point had youtube came out in 1993 there were not a billion people using the internet so it coming out in 2005 was an opportunity for it really to take off because on uh, people were using the uh, video it was billions of people people using the internet it was over 1 billion so when you put something like that on the market it's got it's got a chance um now the other part is that it was in the it was founded in the usa so at, at around that time the usa had more internet users than any um uh, country in the world even more than the rest of europe you know so had it had had maybe someone in europe created uh, a video streaming there were people who created it but then by opportunity that youtube was founded in the states it could take off and really um, um, overtake whoever had created it anywhere in the world. So your population matters. Uh, users got like, uh, I think at that time, it was just slightly over 300 uh, million people. So think of, for instance, South Africa, 50 million people. Uh, not all, all of us are on the internet. And in fact, I think it's just around, just under 70% of people maybe on the end, I think it might have been more, but just in comparison, you use it like over 80%. I think now it's maybe just early 90% of people using, uh, I think it's over 90% of people using the internet, but using e-commerce, just almost 90, 90%. So you can figure when you're here, for example, 50 million people versus US population, now it's almost what? 300, uh, almost 400 million people. If I start a t-shirt business, and um, in it, uh, in e-commerce uh, penetration, it's in the 60 percent. The USA, it's in maybe the eighties. But here, I've got fifty million people. Say, I sell ten t-shirts here, and then some. You can imagine the ratio in the states. It's almost four hundred million people who will be buying that t-shirt. So something maybe founded in an area where there's like a lot of people um, has maybe more chances of, of of success. These are just the dynamics of you know looking at. Um, taking out new innovations. So I'll, I'll go through the factors. Uh, I call it factors that enable the success of a product. The first one is behavioral utility. Um, I said that um, a product has to, has to mirror our biological inclinations. Like I said with Zoom, we, our purpose here, the utility of it is that we must connect. Human beings like connecting. You know, when you've got a car, um and then you want to travel somewhere maybe to see your lover that's like that's a inclination you know however you can define it that that sense that drives you to go there when you've got a car you go to work that's an inclination to go work and come feed your your family so you can say that it's biological so uh, the first fact is uh, behavioral utility uh biology defines behavior as um anything that a living organism does so human beings are a living organism Everything that we do, hunger, love, uh, sorrow, all these things, are, uh, you know, it's behavior, it's human behavior. Uh, addiction to drugs, that's behavior. Um, drinking alcohol, that's, that's psychological, that's a biopsychological behavior. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's something, it's things that are ingrained in us as, as, as human beings, even though we might not see it. So behavior doesn't have to be necessarily bad or good, like hence I mentioned drugs it's just what we are you know we we've got a tendency sometimes to get addicted to bad things bad behavior whether you say it's good or bad but that's that's um that's behavior of human beings so a drug user who goes out for drugs that's they meet a certain utility even though you know we we say it's not good but behaviorally psychologically biologically there's something driving that person so instance with youtube um I don't know why we like video, but maybe we just like seeing animals on video. Maybe 
people here now are watching us as an inclination driving them for maybe for information uh maybe we like cars the video can capture that um that 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 uh, that uh, inclination for us and it serves us some utility maybe we like jokes on the internet it's some sort of utility so the fa- the product number one is that it has to uh, meet our behavioral inclination in one way or another um so that's the, people have to recognize that they can get utility out of that i remember when when we were kids like money is an innovation it's got utility for us uh kids well, i'm sure kids uh, they want sweets but then they later realize that okay you need money to buy sweets they don't want money because they understand what money is they just understand that money can go and get them uh it, the utility which is sugar and then you know sugar said that uh biologically we, we we evolved to liking sugar meaning our ancestors in before the human form uh they used to consume a lot of uh, sugar and then now we innovated like a processed sort of sugar so that thing still it's within our inclination and um the second part of the factors is innovation so innovation um i said it's it's taking two or more things to make um some something another utility something more agile when you mix internet and banking it comes internet banking so that's that's the innovation so when you're making something novel not new you are either you're staking two things like i said a chair um and a wheel they make a wheelchair a wheelchair is more agile like it's it's another utility um even a, even a simple chair it, it's a mixture of things it's a mixture of a geometric structure that can allow a human being to sit not a lion or any other animal but maybe 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 a dog can sit comfortably on a chair but you know primarily it's made for for a human being so you're mixing that geometric shape with a solid um object it could be wood uh, it could be steel again you can make a steel wooden chair you still mix in two things you you kind of like innovating uh you can even mix plastic so when plastic was discovered as a new material and then you can make a chair with it so that's the first part when you're innovating you're kind of like staking for agility or staking for a newer utility and then i mentioned the part about location specific adjacent possible i said youtube was opportune in really getting ahead because it was in the states uh the states had more people using the internet than any other country than the whole of europe at that point which is yeah so it was bound to succeed in 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 the usa than any other country i'm not making an argument that maybe it wouldn't have succeeded maybe there could have been other factors but you know the clear one is that the numbers count like if a company is making more money it means it can you know i mean man is fuel so the more money you make if you make more money than other can really uh, beat the competition in those in those areas um the the other one um uh, i call it um convenience metrical interest of a product what i'm what i mean by this so products are not equal um or rather they are metrics or their dynamics are not equal so for instance you've got a book and then you've got a roll on a book maybe you buy once and read and once you done with it you shelve it or you give it away or once in a while you you come back to it or maybe well the bible is a different one people keep coming to refer to it but then you bought it you bought it you're not going back to the shop to buy another one whereas a roll on uh it's a product that you use every month so when you put out a roll on probably nine or maybe 9.9 people out of 10 in front of you are using it right so the, the, its matrix are different from a book so you can imagine all these different products they've got a different use matrix some you use them every day if you use them every day it means probably once a month or once every two months you're going to buy it buy bread you buy it every day right so they, they they've got different sort of behaviors uh, metrical behaviors so you just need to understand what's the behavior of your product i write books i sell books and when when a person has bought my book not like they're going to go back and buy the same book so maybe i need to release another one or maybe i need to dilute what i do with different things if the current books are not are not selling um network effect which is okay network effect actually falls under this uh, convenience metric I, i was mentioning Uh, we on zoom we use it over and over we on facebook we use it daily so meaning facebook really gets to make i think probably facebook is the most used product in the world or maybe it's in the top used product in the world so meaning every day more people are using it and i mean they can make more money 
Um, the other part is, is a, the a business model. Now, different companies have got different models. Um, YouTube, there was Vimeo. Vimeo is still in existence, but it was a, it's a video streaming service. It, I think it came out relatively around the same time with with um, with, uh, with 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 YouTube. Either before, just, I, I forgot the details. But yeah, this book is loaded. Anyway, so um, it was a paid service, and then YouTube was free. So maybe is the configuration with YouTube is that it was free. That's how it got successful. I'm not saying that's the reason, but you have to look at the tweet dynamics. One, it's free. It was a chance, maybe. Because when you're taking a chance, that's never necessarily been taken. You, you don't know whether it will work it or it won't work. But with YouTube, seemingly it worked in that it was free and then meaning more people were free to access it. It, can, it could get more videos than Vimeo because I could just take a, a video of my dog and then it's up on YouTube. Vimeo, because uh, it wanted uh, kind of like uh, good quality videos, whereas YouTube wasn't. And the, 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 the sixth fact, it's luck. You know, you're an entrepreneur. When you're an entrepreneur, you just have to try. You don't know whether it will work. All these things maybe I mentioned, um, they are nice things, you know, just to kind of like analyze your business and understand the structure of your or the behavior of your product. But again, at the, at, the, at the end of the day, you need to try. It's luck, you know what I mean. So you you, got, you, you have to try. So it's in in that in that configuration. Um, like I was saying, uh, you can imagine three million years ago, human beings were innovating to now call the fourth industrial revolution. Fourth industrial revolution, yes, it's special, but not necessarily special. It's just like I said, it's just human beings continuing to do what we do. We 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 keep tinkering. The more innovations there are, the more innovations you can make. Um, you know, so you know the, the sort of the official definition of the four IR is that um, it's a it's a mixture of of physical and virtual systems. We've got autonomous cars. We've got three D printing. Uh, we've got uh, um, um, decentralized consensus, which is like the category where Bitcoin falls. All these things um, you're taking. Um, you know, something, a hard substance, you're mixing it with something virtual. I, uh, there's, there's 3D printing. Um, I think some 2019 or so, the, uh, 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 Professor Chifulari and his team, yeah, they, they made the first uh, 3D printed uh, some bones for, for ears and they restored someone's hearing. That was, not, it wasn't possible with, without 3D printing. So the, uh, the, the 3D printing coming, it means what? It means you can now mix it with, into biology. You know what I mean? So you're, you're mixing all these cyber systems with biology, with all these different things. They are, they are intermixing because, like I said, when you're innovating, you're bringing two or more things together. So now you can bring a 3D printing into restoring uh, hearing. So it, it always follows like that. So for, for you, the, 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 the entrepreneur, the innovator, you always have to look all this information. What can I mix to make something agile? What can I mix to get a new solution? Because think of it, you can't make something new out of what doesn't exist. So whatever innovation that's going to be made tomorrow will be made with whatever that exists today. So it's power. Look, you have to keep looking at what is in existence. You can take that thing and mix it with that thing and make something new. So nothing new exists out of just thin air. It, ha it has to have a background, it has to have a, like an evolutionary trait. All the innovations from today going back, they can, you can bring them together and make something new. Yeah. Uh, I don't know uh, if you just want to come in or there are questions. Uh, <laughs> would you like to just, just hold your breath for like five seconds there? Uh, there. Sure, let me do that. <laughs> Drink some water, keep it going, keep it flowing. No, it's absolutely <laughs> There is a question uh, that we actually sure, sure. have. Yay. Um, this is from Mutushi. Uh, can you kindly touch on using for, well, for IR to mm -hmm. subliminally uh, solicit sales for one's productions or solutions? Let me say that again. Can you Maybe simplify it for me. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, how can you uh, use fourth IR? So this is sort of kind of 
inception type of, mm -hmm. type of thing. because also you know there is a, a psychology to 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 advertising and to 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 um garnering sales so yeah. they're asking if is there a way you can use technology to insert messages in order to 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 sell uh, uh products or services is there I, I wouldn't know hey. <laughs> I, I wouldn't know uh one one thing i one thing i know now there are, there are a couple of, of of sort of apps uh that are that are, like i mean we are psychological people people i'm sure they they know of um what is this it was invented by this guy called jonathan bendler it's a uh, neuro linguistic programming so it's, it's kind of like using words to get people to action or to put people in a way that you like normally you'll see on facebook uh, there are these people who drive a nice uh, copy where they are you know letting you into buying their product that's that's they use mechanics of neuro linguistic programming so you're kind of like using words uh, that people respond to and then you're holding them to the message maybe you're tapping into their fears because it's kind of like maybe psychology stuff it was sort of seen as uh, pseudo psychology when it came out but then i see a lot mm. of people are going and studying neuro linguistic program it works and then why i say it works then look at the comments you said when you see those posts you see like thousands and thousands of people commenting meaning something in the in the copyright there it's kind of like bringing people there so now there are a couple of apps where in the you you submit your you maybe you've written a bit of copy to show you keywords to use um in order to kind of like have people kind of like you, you you're letting a computer maybe write your copy but then it's writing copy based on sort of keywords i don't know how they got whether those words are work psychologically but i know neuro linguistics um that kind of copywriting because I, I, I sometimes i do a bit of copywriting i know there are certain ways or trigger ways or sort of to, how to phrase things um to really have people in, engage in your content or or, or or to take action um, I mean, there's a pattern. You think of a comedian being on stage, holding people's attention for over an hour. There is a there is a pattern to that, you know, uh, where the like, way he gets in the love. You know, people are not sleeping. Like, imagine uh, listening to a stand-up comedian for like an hour, and then you like you're listening. There is a pattern to that, and then the question is that can that be computerized? I think absolutely. Um, there are so many things that probably you can kind of like look at. Just look at the apps if. Maybe you are interested in that in terms of of, of a user, but again, I think there's a, there's a there's an avenue for innovation there. You know, you can check whether with MR, what do you call it, fMR scans. I'm sure they've checked which ways are like kind of like trigger people. Uh, same as hypnosis, you know, might say it's this that, but they're using weights, and then there's a there's a certain pattern to that. That I believe there's a certain pattern to that, and then I think these people who are creating all these apps that do copyright for you i'm sure that they are getting that they're getting the data from somewhere yeah oh, brilliant uh very <laughs> very insightful uh, sure so my, my, my whole thing uh, let me let me just add this my, my whole thing it's not to say i look at everything that has to do with the four i and i look for framework so you know mm -hmm. looking you're looking for like the adjacent possible. I'm saying nothing new can be made out of what doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So it's a framework. Like if you're innovating, like what I was just explaining with um, the copyright stuff that there are now people are tinkering with apps that kind of like write copy for you. You know, that's a, that's a whole framework. You know, one, on one part, maybe you can take you from um, uh, NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, and then maybe you can take advantage of all the scans that can scan a person's uh, emotions. What's that thing? Uh, when you, a lie detector test. I don't know if it, if it works, but I'm sure somewhere there um, you you can you can there's, there's a bit of pudding there in that proof. You can find a way. Just take that and test it out with other things because you are tinkering. So innovations are like I said, they're discovered either by mistake or spontaneously mm. or by intention. The corona uh, the uh, the, the Corona vaccine was was a, a deliberate move to to find that vaccine. Imagine that, that, that it's a new it's a novel uh, virus, and then now scientists have to go figure out. And then it, that is possible because uh, also technology has, has sort of progressed. There's a thing called CRISPR. People can Google it. It's kind of like 
DNA sequencing. I was I saw an article that they're testing a, a HIV uh, Q using CRISPR. So CRISPR also it's a, it's a new innovation. So it can sequence DNA and kind of like scan cells and all those sort of things. So all these things are there. Whatever you're thinking, whatever problem you have, I'm sure just look into what's already there, and then you know think of a way how you can you can do you can you can do that just to bring it back to the copyright stuff. I'm sure that there, there are different data points or other innovations that can show emotional triggers in people. And then sometimes emotions are, are what are triggered by weights. Like when you're watching a movie, it's a visual horror movies have actually have got a have got like a, a pattern, I'm sure, of how they scare people. We are inclined to to that fear. We want to get scared. But then over the years, I'm sure directors they they know a pattern and like, you know if you can put that pattern, I don't know if there's, there's a way you, you can get data in terms of what scares people, what kind of weights get ingrained in people that when I say this way, you act in a certain way. So I, I just think of it on of in terms of frames. When you've got a framework, you you you, you can actually kind of like peruse into 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 the future. Uh, yeah. No, beautiful. Um, <laughs> sure, sure. Now I'm thinking of soul. <laughs> <laughs> and all those other scary movies. Um, yes, it's very mm -hmm. deliberate. It's, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's, it's an art as well. Yeah. Uh, also, yeah, fellow script writer and how mm -hmm. we position words. Words are very powerful. And True. you know what? As we are speaking of words, I just want to bring uh, some thought to language. And when I speak of language mm -hmm. uh, with regards to, and I, and I love the fact that you are very open and you embrace uh, everything that you can and will learn about anything and everything, you know, mm -hmm. an amazing quality to, to possess. Uh, for me, my question is, as an African, Mm -hmm. in Africa um, with regards to language and accessibility or lack thereof what is fourth industrial uh, revolution in your mother tongue what is uh, data <laughs> in your mother tongue I, I don't know, you know I don't what know. I'm saying so how <laughs> how do we in terms of education yes we want to mm -hmm. empower want to give people accessibility but if we don't have the capacity to house that level of empowerment how do we mm -hmm. as africans and, and and native speakers be able to 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 access that information i mean the technical jargon i'm i'm i'm, I'm i don't know most of the things you said i was i was <laughs> googling trying to understand <laughs> the words you know so how mm -hmm. do you speak about um these developments but also not just speaking about technological development externally but what technolo technologies can we use psychology in in psychology to develop our language um you know way in which we can access information like this it's, it's quite well discombobulating. Yeah. it's discombobulating. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, it's something that i that i that i think about and you know sometimes we think from a love for for africa but I'm scared in terms of what, I, what I'm thinking. I, I mean, um, so many languages have died. And, it's, you know, it's, it's not a reason of, I suspect that it's not, it's not, it can get a bit of political here, but it's not a reason of the colonizers or whatever, you know. So languages die, but here's the, here's the other advantage in this digital age. Maybe the languages that died, uh there's then there you'd find record of them but now we are in an age where we can have a record of all the languages meaning now there's so many um, um, um what do you call it programs that can translate uh, so many languages with like over 90 percent accuracy so on the one on one side i'm saying some languages will die but on the other i'm saying they won't really die maybe they'll be in a hard drive somewhere but let's let's not, I think, fool ourselves in that. Um, there's, there's like now, like English, it's kind of like the 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 sort of the leading language in the world, and I I I find it hard how we're going to challenge it to so that we can use our own native languages because, I mean, it's a uh, it's like the, the YouTube thing I, I I was saying that when it came out, USA had like a lot of internet users. But then now, how are we going to challenge a language when there's so few of us who speak that language? So, so most of the information will, 
will come in English. The nice thing is that they can be translated. Or maybe even English will, I don't know, maybe thousands of years from now will take another 10. Uh, because, I mean, like I, I think about language quite a lot. But, uh, yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm in between. But languages won't die because there's videos recorded. There's um, books that are translated or written in native languages. So, so many languages won't die. But, I mean, I can think of it this way. Um, people need to come together. You know, there was a point where people within continents couldn't travel to one another, even within the same continent, just to go to one area, it was far. So we, 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 we come together now, meaning that innovation has allowed us to access other, other continents. And the simple language that we use was money. So like think of money as well as a, as a, as a language, because it's an innovation. It allows us to trade in simple terms before it was gold. And now one dominant language became, I would say because of colonization, the, the British were really dominant uh, because they were the ones who were circumnavigating the world and kind of like traveling. They had, them, they had a lot of ships. Like, you know, I think sometimes we look at history from a, a victim sort of mentality. Like I said, sorry, it, it can get into a bit of politics, but I just like to analyze it for what it is. You've got someone who's got boats who can travel to all the world and they can colonize. I mean, colonize, you can think of it in whatever way. Now, Elon Musk wants to go to Mars. You know, in a sense, it's colonizing, you know. <laughs> so, it, uh, like, I'm, I'm finding it hard to really to say, how are we going to beat English? Uh, meaning what? Whatever language, you, whatever language that you want to go beat, whatever other language. Uh, you can't necessarily force it. I don't know. Maybe people can force it. I don't know. Like I'm, I'm in between, and I like that I'm in between because it means I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it. But uh, the languages won't die because now with technology, they can just be on, on the cloud. Essentially, you can learn whatever language today you want on, 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 on the internet. And another thing with education, uh, there's so many things. Of, let's just put YouTube up. So YouTube, let's just say you want to learn algebra. There's so many videos online that um, explain, like let's just say they explain a certain topic in algebra. Now, those videos in a sense are competing. The one that's more understandable will win. So again, it, it means what? Education. So imagine if I'm a teacher, I'm in a class. Yes, I'm maybe articulating, explaining that topic. But then I know on YouTube, there's someone who's better than me. I will make my class watch that so that they can understand better. So educate, I think education also is leaning towards agility in that you can learn essentially whatever topic you want online. And then the one that's really the best at teaching gets sort of upvotes or gets most views. And it means uh, it's like a voting system. People can just go watch it. It means it's the best. So maybe education is going to a stance where um, you don't really have to teach, you just have to um, curate content, other people's content to teach your learners in that sense. So, like, it's a myriad of ideas, as you can see. <laughs> yeah. No, definitely, uh, there's, there's a whole lot happening. I'm, I'm really glad. Oh, unmute, thank you. I'm okay. really glad <laughs> that you spoke about um, uh, teachers being able to access uh, content and be able to share with their class. But, you know, looking at wealth and income uh, mm -hmm. inequality in South Africa and, and you know, the, the social disparities between private and public sector, what mm -hmm. would you say um, that with regards to infrastructure, because without infrastructure, there's no accessibility. So what do you see as um, actually a solution to, for example, if textbooks can't be delivered, let alone having to deliver mm -hmm. the information within the textbooks. So what do you think the, 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 the learning and education um, to combat um, uh, uh, um, low yeah. literacy rate? How, how can we tap into that? Let me just find a, a certain section here that I think I'll use that frame to answer that. Um, so anyone can just go on Google and check uh, Peter Diamandis, um, six Ds of technological exponential disruption, right? So 
it's okay. Maybe I'm trying to figure out how do I link it to that. Um, think of it this way. Someone creates the internet and then ultimately becomes YouTube. And then I just said, best videos for teaching certain topics go onto, onto YouTube. Now, again, that's, that's a good thing in that now, if, for example, we, we've got, everyone's got access to data, they can go on YouTube and learn a topic that maybe 20 years ago, it was uh, impossible to kind of learn, right? So maybe that's that, that's that's the the the, the advantage of 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 of, um, of learning that of of having innovation. So one something. So the six days say this. Um, one something is digitized. So with innovation, you create something and you digitize it. You take uh, a certain educational topic and then you digitize it, and then it's digital. The second step is, is that there's deception. Um, internet, so many innovations, people thought maybe they were not going to go anywhere, right? And then there's a, there comes a stage where it disrupts everything. Internet really disrupted a lot of things, banking, all these sort of things. Um, then comes demonetization, right? Demonetization, thing, it becomes cheaper because now you can produce in mass. Uh, when you produce in mass, things become, I mean, digital things are just actually... There's no, it's zero marginal cost of production. I mean, if I'm selling an, an ebook, I'm not really spending anything. It's just like selling. But if I'm selling a, 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 a what do you call it, a, a printed book, it means every time I have to go print. And then there's uh, dematerialization. Uh, videos to you, to, to the internet, it's, they are dematerialized, meaning they, are, they just exist now on the cloud. Uh, and then democratization. Democratization means everyone can use it. I think there's a workshop that I, I, I host called um, it is the cheapest and easiest time to be an innovator and an entrepreneur, which is actually in a sense true in that things are easier now. Um, if you are in the Eastern Cape, I don't know well, how people used to register companies from the Eastern Cape, but I'm from Limbobo, then you have to travel to Pretoria. Now you can just do it online. You can open an account online. Um, so the opening of, of an account, in a sense, it's dematerialized, uh, it's democratized. You, we, internet slowly, surely, it's getting cheaper. Uh, although I think for, for other reasons between uh, you know, our corporations here and government, it's, it's not becoming cheaper. I was in the suit, I think, two weeks back. One gig data is flipping cheap. Eh? I don't, I don't, like it's, it's, it's very cheaper. So maybe it might be political sort of situation with, with data. But innovation, the more it becomes uh, uh, dematerialized, it becomes democratized, meaning everyone can use it. Any, 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 anyone now can learn a certain topic, whether on meds, on anything. So 20 years ago, probably couldn't do those things. So I think we are in a, in a, in a, in a better world. Um, Another example I like to give is that around 2009, I, I used to have like a, 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 a digital camera, there will be a laptop, there will be a cell phone, a Blackberry, uh, there will be a, what's this, a GPS thingy. So a phone is like, it was like 3.5, a camera, I remember I bought this Nikon camera for 1.5, a laptop, I think I bought it for 5,000. Um, a GPS which was around thousand. So if you mix all these numbers, it's almost ten thousand, right? Now because transistors became smaller, like you know, um, so uh, computers work with a thing called CPU, central processing unit. In, inside is transistors, so they were becoming smaller. So a, a typical iPhone six has got like I think over one billion transistors inside. So because those things were becoming smaller, all those four devices could be packaged in one thing, which is a cell phone that you can today buy for 1,200. So today you've got a device that's got things that maybe around 2009, you'd have to pay uh, almost um, 10,000 for. So it's untrue that things are not becoming better. Technology and innovation is making things more agile. So that's that's maybe what I mean, but I don't want to also speak from because government man operates in in its own 
parameters and you know as an entrepreneur you don't want to stress yourself thinking government will do this of course you you as an as as sort of entrepreneurs will say what's on your mind and all these programs that government has just apply for them but i like operating from this fear of i whatever i want to do i have to do it and i'll do it I it was a long winded answer so <laughs> i couldn't no i couldn't agree more um yeah you know and that's what we encourage with this festival is is that level of mm -hmm. heightened level of agency because at yeah. the end of the day you know we need to uh, bootstrap if we have to but you know within this information age uh mm -hmm. we have no excuses basically and i mean it's Truth. part of sessions like these that actually um there are a lot of things that i'm still trying to process because um yeah I'm not, <laughs> it's not my area of expertise <laughs> so um, but, let's just <laughs> But it, 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 I am able to engage with what you are saying in terms of sure, sure, sure. expressing and how it has impacted your very amazing journey. I see you've mm -hmm. learned a lot. Yeah. Um, maybe again, let me touch on. So this is article, man. Some people don't like it. I call it uh, MBA and chartered account 10 led corporate South Africa failed to innovate. Um, Look, you can't create jobs if you're not innovating. If you're not creating anything new, it means you're what? You are buying everything from whoever can produce it in mass, which is which, for instance, is China. So I think a lot of corporate South Africa is just importing everything from China. They are also to blame for the sort of the joblessness in the country because they're not they're not innovating, man. You need to put money into things and 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 create new things because you can't compete with with old things, um, Edgar's closed a lot of shops. And I suspect one of the reasons is that, I mean, yeah, back then they used to have like um, exclusive licensing agreements with brands. Um, I remember, uh, what's this other sh uh, store that, that department store closed? They had like, um, well, they had, they, had, uh, they had deals, exclusive deals, but now companies were no longer offer offering exclusive deals. Even my, now you as well, can just order Nike sneakers and open a shop and all these things. So I think most of this cooperation phase that they're going to compete with things are becoming more agile. Companies are just selling to to everyone. They don't need no longer need exclusive licenses. You can just start a a shoe brand today, like um, probably ten years ago. Because I'm speaking from experience to get clothes, to make shoes, clothes. Uh, the minimum order quantities were like in thousands. Today it's like, hey, because of um, technological advances, the transistors becoming smaller, smaller machines were made. Now you can make your shoes starting with 50 units. So imagine 50 units today, 1,000 units then. I mean, you couldn't afford, say they were selling you each pair for 50 bucks, 50 by 1,000. It's like, was it 50,000, my It's not so good. Today, like you can get the same pass for fifty for fifty rands at fifty units and start your brand. So whatever, so many things now you can do. Like, hence I'm saying, it is the cheapest time to be an innovator and entrepreneur. And that things are cheaper, things are easier. Um, there are even home brewing kids, you know, for beer, for all these different things. You no longer need to make a thousand units of things, and which I think. You know, corporate South Africa still depends on importing things from China and there. And then I think it's an opportunity for us. We can create things that are new and still, you know, sell them at the same price, although maybe it'll be slightly expensive. But that's 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 an opportunity that I see. Hmm. <laughs> Five o'clock right on the dot. Thank you so much. Your timing yeah. is impeccable, and then you say you don't know, you don't have good math. Well, your timing is impeccable. <laughs> Are you even African? No, I'm joking. Stereotypes <laughs> must fall. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Stereotypes must fall, but on the real though, thank you so much for such an empowering session. I have pleasure, learned pleasure. so much today than I ever did in high school. My time. <laughs> I'm over-exaggerating. But uh, for real though, um, 
yeah, just so many questions. It has sparked so many conversations that mm. I, I, I need to have with myself, actually, when I, when I get off line uh, with regards to, you know, creating that level of agency within us as, as a people in particular and, you mm -hmm. know, tapping into those avenues and creating those opportunities. So very, very brilliantly articulated. I just Thank need you. to inculcate it now, you know. <laughs> So, That's a big uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so now uh, we're gonna have a two minute break. I'm my eyes. I don't know what else, but yeah, so a two minute break to catch up with sir. And uh, yeah, I'm we'll gonna plug in my phone and use those earphones that don't work so well because it's dying. <laughs> Go right ahead. Do that. All right, we are back with the awesomeness. It's been quite a, a very educational session. I feel like I can go get my master's degree now. Um, <laughs> so we are doing questions and answers. Well, it's a question and answer session. And anyone and everyone who has questions, please throw them forward to the floor. Any hands up? Kritz, kritz. Mr. Litten, anything from you, sir? Uh, Paseka, 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 you have been summoned. You have been summoned by Mr. Litelu. I'm about to. Hey, sorry about that. Engaged in another question. Sorry. Yeah. First and foremost, I. Uh, your connection is bad, sir. Yeah. It's, we can't. Yeah, it's a bit stuck there. Am I yeah. audible? Very staccato. Am I audible? Yes, you're audible now. Yes. Am I audible? Yebo. Yes, yes, yes. And yebo. Can you hear you now? Yebo. Am yebo. I 
vegetable. Yes. yes. <laughs> maybe maybe switch off the video. Maybe uh, maybe if it's a connection, maybe it's overloading the feed. Oh. Uh, uh, Okay, how are we on sound? I can hear you. You can Hello. hear me, but you... Okay. Colleagues? Hello, yes, yes, there you are. We found you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yes. Um, <clears throat> oh, thank you very much, colleagues. I, I just wanted to say that I was wowed by the level of insight that we have received from uh, Mr. He said so. Uh, this man is uh, is very profound. I like the fact that he knows what he's talking about, and he the way that he he sums up the origin of innovation. You know, uh, I am one who believes that innovation, or rather, invention, is the mother. Sorry, necessity is the mother of invention. And how, Mister? Am I audible, colleagues? Yes, I get this. I, I can hear you. There's a bit of an echo, but we can hear you. I can hear you. Absolutely, I can hear you. Okay, maybe. All right, all right. So yes, uh, I was just mentioning that uh, it has it has been it's an insightful session that uh, and that the thesis has been granting us. This level of insight is not necessarily acquired just from books. It required a level of experience as well. So I would like you in the they said so to also share a bit about your failures you know you touched on it can you can you just tell us about the pivots that you had to do as an innovator because we we have this notion at least from the books that we we, we come across that uh, innovation is you know the innovation cycle right or the journey of innovation it's you would have your concept then then you have your your prototype, prototype, pilot, pilot, uh, then market ready, market ready commercialization. But the, the, the tenure between conceptualization and commercialization differs from one person to another. Could you share some of your personal experiences on this journey from conceptualization to commercialization and the amount of pivots that you had to do and the reason why I'm, I'm elaborating or rather emphasizing the pivots is because in, in one in this context, if you cannot get it right two or three times, then it's time to give up. Um, in my language, they say, Sapala, Sapala, Sali, You know, if it's not working out, leave it. But then we, get, we come across the likes of... Uh, um a eh, ten thousand times if not a thousand times and he would then say uh, i found out how not to do it the nine thousand nine hundred and ninety times prior so could you share yeah. with us some of your experiences about pivoting and then also elaborate on when you catch this before you thomas edison levels Thank you, oh, well, I didn't hear the last part. What cut losses? Uh, Cindy, what, what was he saying? Cut losses. I didn't. I didn't get the last part there. Okay, uh, I've decided to to switch off my video in case uh, my sure. bandwidth was bad. Let me. Yes. All right, I'm going to summarize the question. I would like yes. you two things. We. I would appreciate sure. you elaborate on two things. One, share your experiences on conceptualization all the way to commercialization and the amount of pivots you had to make along the way in order to get to that what some would define as success then okay. secondly okay. I'll, then the second uh, build up on that i would like you to to also give guidance on when should uh, an entrepreneur or innovator cut their losses meaning stop this is not working okay like just let it go or should we keep on mm -hmm. keeping on until we get it right yeah 
there are two schools of thought Yo, there. Um, One is to never give up, and then the yeah. other school of thought is uh-huh. cultural loss. All right, cool. I, I I get the questions. Uh, Please go ahead, sir. Yo, the answers are yo. The answers are, are, are difficult. I would say this. So the other day, when was it? Last week, Friday. I just ten thirty-five, and you know the period leading to that, man. I was just stressed. Uh, I wouldn't say depressed, but you know, very despondent in a couple of things. Um, you know, COVID caused a lot of uh, problems for 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 me and a lot of other entrepreneurs. And then at ten thirty-five, I was like, ah. You know, I, I, I'm I still young. I'm, like, I just somehow, I just got re-energized re- 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 and uh, maybe that's, there were a couple of things that I wanted to give up on. So I'm not so, I mean, okay, let me maybe go, go back. So when I wrote my first book, Forget the Business Plan, is this short model. Uh, before then, I had, um, we ran two clothing labels, Gavel Heights and Rural Doors. If you Google them, you still see uh, the, the clothes there. Those two businesses failed easy money. Like they failed. I had to move home. Um, I was home. The only probably position I had was like a laptop and clothes. And I'm like, yeah, ne? what am I going to do next? Doesn't that those business close? They closed themselves down. Like I didn't have any, we didn't have any cash to, to do anything to them. So I would say the pivot was, and then I got an idea to write a book. And um, so I had written this old article called um, Essential Business Components. If you Google it, I'm sure you'll, you'll get it online. So it outlines six things that I think are crucial. And I realized I wrote this article because I disliked business plans. I thought they were tedious. So I had a framework which was, which was easier. So let me not maybe get into the framework. So I'm saying the pivot is that whatever failure, uh, we just need to... Sometimes you are forced, you can't do anything because there's no cash, right? You just, you have to move home because all those things have to happen, you know, you can hold on, but if the landlord saying go out, you have to go out. And I thought, okay, man, this is my second business. Let me get into authoring. So I, I wrote that book based on that article. And the, the, the mattress were that. So I had, I was listening to podcasts. So when I'm stressed, so all the time, make sure I listen to podcasts. So there's this guy called James Haltucha. He's also an author. He's got an awesome book called... Uh, Choose yourself. So, but you are saying, so he's got a couple of books, I think 21 now. So, some of his books are like 30 pages long. You know, I say, you know, if you want to write a book, who says the book has to be 200 pages? And I thought, let me attempt writing a book, and the minimum is 40. And then that book ended up being 50 pages. So, that was my first book. So, I would say, in a sense, maybe it's pivoting because what I was writing about is things that uh, I was simplifying sort of a business model, but I couldn't have. Watching that knowledge, if it wasn't me having gone through being being an entrepreneur, so in in one essence, it's kind of like pivoting, and then that just led to me getting into the business of books, which is my first book, second book. It cost me nothing, and I knew that um, I wasn't going to approach any publisher. I was going to do it myself. So I taught myself how to do layout design, um, the writing. I remember the editor I paid. I paid her five hundred because my little brother hooked me up with her um she used to do read news on 702 maybe let me not say her name uh, yeah but i paid her 500 and then I, like that lady really really helped me you know what i mean so because i was just down and out and broke so i'm forever thankful for that so again i, I was going back to sort of my little brother realized oh my brother is you know I, i've been writing even before i wrote books like okay let, let, people will help you out I remember a friend, a friend of mine paid for the first batch of my books, like gave me 4K to go print those books. I haven't paid him back anyway. So <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's pivoting or what, but now second book until the seventh book. So books cost me maybe nothing to write, just maybe they cost me effort of researching. And mostly what I write about is some of the things that I, I, I experienced, but now I'm writing about innovation. So that's a bit more about, about research. Um, that led me to getting into peer publishing, publishing other people because it just so that I was I was doing some nice work for myself, and then I ended up publishing for them. So I guess that's maybe the next level. And then publishing, I don't want to lie to you; it really it messed me up. Eh? Um, we got into bookstores last year um, in February, and we've got probably over fifteen books that we 
printed. So when you're getting into bookstores, you imagine it's over 90 bookstores. You have to kind of like print sufficient books for them. And then capital-wise, that was quite intensive. We get into bookstores, the hard lockdown comes, meaning there's no traffic that goes to bookstores. And in SA, people still read a lot of uh, hard books. So that was just difficult. And then after that, you know, the levels were a bit restricted, but most of the stores were not doing bookstore activation. So we couldn't really match that because I still believe that, you know, although people say yes online, but online has needs also to be given live by real live events. <laughs> So live events happened. So that was just hard. And technically, the business was a bit bankrupt. But, you know, because I do a bunch of things, um, income from, from, from different places, you know, I think now we are kind of like on the comeback. Now we're starting to do um, those activations. But maybe the reason I didn't give up or close the business is because we've got a lot of store, a lot of books sitting with the distributor. They need to move. That's kind of like just cash sitting. So, I would say, man, I don't really have the perfect answer of when, of when to close or what. Sometimes the circumstances just force you to close. But for me, so I've got a, a book called The, the Anxious Entrepreneur. The subtitle is um, Anxiety Defeats Creativity. Creativity Defeats Anxiety. So when you are in a slump, right, you, you, you're you not thinking clearly. You're not, like, you're seeing the world as this being this sort of, you're seeing the world ahead as just, a dark hole. So you need to get out of that, you know, an anxious rut and just, you know, go hang out with friends, go out, uh, go home, uh, listen to podcasts. I get it. Honestly, I get a lot of ideas from, from, from podcasts. You know, I'll just people explaining their troubles or their different innovation. That's how maybe my mind gets sparked. That's when a new business idea gets sparked. Because that's, when you're creative, it means you've got something to work on. You're being productive. So when anxiety visits you, you can't think creatively and it just becomes hard to do to do anything. So I'm saying this is a mixture of things. So I'm not saying close your business or don't close it, but it's with you have to decide. Ultimately, the decision is with you. Again, it's just a learning exercise. From those failed businesses or from that struggled business, it gives you a better idea of what to do next. Like I gave an example with, with, with Twitter. They were doing one business. They, see, they saw that it wasn't working, but they, or they had developed this internal communication tool. They gave investors uh, who invested in, in that company money back. And then they went on with Twitter. So ideas come from ideas. Ideas come from uh, a bad idea. So good business ideas, I believe, also come from good, uh, bad business ideas. So the answer is not like straightforward. I, I wouldn't want to, I'll be lying honestly if I were just to say, uh, give it up like this, you know. It's, it's a myriad of things. You have to see what other people are saying. But also, you know, you, you have to make the decision for yourself. You can't just listen to every sort of guru who tells you how to do things. You have to kind of like, you have to analyze the world, basically. That's what I'm saying. Yourself. The, 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 the ultimate responsibility of deciding is, with, deciding is with you. Maybe taking a break, going, getting a job. Maybe it's not a bad thing. I'm not saying it's, it's a good thing or not, but I'm just saying that you have to, Kind of like think and make take the final plug of what you do, but you can't work on ideas that are you know that are not working out. You like that old uh, saying that uh, insanity is doing the same thing and hoping it will work out. So maybe that applies, but maybe some people do things over and over until it works. But now and then you will see a kind of like maybe I can call this person because I've just met them today and. Maybe they will give me business. It's it's thinking, man. So <laughs> I said I'm I'm out well, Maybe, but yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like uh, 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 you know difficult to to say leave no. it like this or not. No, Rema Lomara Olevo. Thank you very much for, hey, for your 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 answer. You've given a, an answer based on your experience, which is exactly mm -hmm. what I expected. I I, I have sure, a sure. follow up to that. You, you also mm -hmm. mentioned in, in your, your prior examples, you made an example of companies like YouTube where they thrive mm -hmm. on the basis of their timing and their timing being the yeah. mass usage of the internet at that given time. Mm -hmm. um, I would also like to look at another aspect of... It's not clear there. 
Yo, I, I didn't, I didn't get you there. Uh, the case that you just simply said. Okay, I, I'm gonna. I'm going to switch. <clears throat> the video, yes, sure. Okay, am I am I audible? Audible, yes. Am I audible? So I, my question is based on two statements you made. One is in tough success, which was the momentum of internet users and mass market in America. Mm -hmm. That's one. To, yes. To another innovator or business or entrepreneur that managed to pay back the investors the money that they had mm -hmm. uh, put in. So my question yeah. is that let's look at yeah let's look at the resource mobilization okay when is the right time for for an innovator or a technopreneur to give away equity and when i mean equity i mean giving it away to employees or or, or founding team members for the sake mm -hmm. of assisting you to get to a level of success versus equity to to investors who will come in with hard cash and demand equity, a substantial equity, to say the yes. least, uh, to ensure that the, the 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 innovation reaches the levels of success like YouTube and the like. So, mm -hmm. could you help us navigate through that conundrum of handing over equity? <clears throat> uh, I mean, with with investors, I guess it's a different story because they're bringing the money. If you really need the money. You will take it. As for the debate on what equity they get, um, that's that's a bit difficult. I've I've said no to someone who wanted a bigger chunk of of, of equity in, in one thing that we're doing. Like it was this DVD ads, but that that thing never worked. So I don't. Know. I, I I think I was right for rejecting the offer, uh, but then we got someone to invest in it, and then it wasn't the whole. It wasn't a substantial amount as as the, as the previous guy, but that that business didn't work. It was called DVD apps. Uh, it was like teaching mathematics on, on DVD. But I guess that idea was maybe bound not to work because um, internet was really taking, I think it's back in 2014. Anyhow, so uh, usually with employees, uh, I mean, you can't give equity to employees when, uh, when you are not, when you're not, not really, you know, uh, up on your feet in, in, in the business. Um, I really do believe in, in giving uh, equity to people that, that work with you. But I think that's a, a late stage kind of thing. And I'm sure many lawyers will help you with that in terms of how do you structure the deal? Are you giving them in terms of the, the amount of, are you, are you rewarding them in the amount of service they've, they've been saving with your, with your, with your company? Um, so, I, I think with the employee one, it's a late stage kind of thing. I, I don't think for a startup entrepreneur, when you're just starting out, you need to kind of like stress yourself with that. Because I mean, even anyone who's, who's, who's helping you, either you're paying them or it's out of maybe some loyalty, you negotiate the terms of that loyalty. Although I don't like people doing things for free, maybe I'll give them a service or something. So it's, it's I mean, it's, yeah, like uh, if they are helping you, probably. If you give them equity, just make sure that it doesn't affect you. Maybe they need to, the service that, that they are giving you. There's so many concepts actually on this that you can get online. But one of them is that whatever work, you will, they will invoice. And then at a later stage, when, when the company is evaluated, their, their amount of um, service in terms of the rent value, it will go into that evaluation. Like you'll say, this company is worth this much. And then their service was 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 worth uh, whatever amount, but then obviously that would have been um, contracted. You have explained it in contract. Do they have voting power? Or do they not have voting power? Which in most cases they don't. Uh, they are not given. They are not given voting power. So it's just you know equity to earn um, a profits of, of of the company. And I, I will say that okay. I'm not so versed in sort of those matters, but the bit of light is is that the one I've given. Okay. No, last but not yeah. least, Rema Loma. Uh, on the, in, considering your your experimental journey, if I may call it mm -hmm. that, could you share the single biggest regret within your journey since UJ 
which could serve as advice to our cohort? Yo, regret. Um, I think I shouldn't have closed the floating labels. Um, I shouldn't have closed because I, I think differently of, 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 of floating labels. It's how I explain it is that when you're creating a logo, when you're creating clothing, people can go check out. It's called Gable Heights. If you Google it, you'll, you'll see some pictures there. I think products are, they, they, they have to make a certain emotional connection with people. And in terms of the design, in terms of the logo, in terms of uh, whatever the artwork that's on, on the clothing. And I think at that point, you had nailed it. I think the expectation was that I, we, I had, me and my partner, then the Siva, we had quit our jobs to try to focus on the clothing kind of like full time. Um, so we didn't have, when, 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 when it went dark, it went really dark because there was no cash. So I want to bring those clothes back, but now I'm not bringing them back as I'm depending on the income they make. They'll just, um, you know, sell themselves. Like whatever money they make, obviously they'll need to grow. And I'm not bringing them back if I, can, if I cannot afford like a, an assistant, basically. Uh, who will kind of like take care of of, of the but the regret I think the closing closing down the closing labels um, was was a big mistake. I think I could have maybe let them rest for like a year and then bring them back because I I realized with closing it's not like tech they they take time really to uh, get in with with people and then sometimes the best thing I think when it's when you create um, a piece of clothing that um, it's kind of like all stars. All stars are kind of like they are a perennial seller. They are forever selling. So I think those pieces of clothing that we had made, they had some perennial qualities in them. Meaning we should have just had stock of them and then keep reprinting or remaking them because they were like especially. It wasn't like just buying a T-shirt from Mr. Price and printing it. We actually buy a fabric from one place, take it to a CMT, which is cut, make, and trim, and then. Um, Put them out there. So I, I, the regret, I think I shouldn't have left the truth. But I mean, it's it's a regret, yes. But yeah, the show must go on. <laughs> the show indeed must go on. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Lang, uh, thank you for all your questions. You set the house on yeah. fire. I don't think anyone else has any other questions to cover because you covered <laughs> everything. We know about global warming now. <laughs> Uh, but thank you so much for such a lovely engagement and just um getting the conversation. It's a pleasure, it's a pleasure, it's a wonderful love pleasure. Love it, love it, love it. Um, and I just like to yeah, say thank you so much uh for sharing uh -huh. all your wisdom and your knowledge and your and your expertise. It's it's absolutely amazing to break bread with you. Um I just like to hand it over to Deshaun for a vote of thanks. If Deshaun is on, Munsami. Oh, is it Hi, new? Hi, everyone. <laughs> my apologies. My apologies. Absolutely wrong. That is my fault. I own it. Uh, it's actually Aquatech News. Hello, awesome entrepreneurs. This is the 4IR Aquatic News, and I am your host, Gokiso. Firstly, a reminder to everyone to please, please interact with the Investor Readiness Program. Complete all those assessments and those lessons, and continue to engage with your advisors and your mentors. Also, if you haven't formed part of our top entrepreneurs, please make sure that you contact one of the people from our 4IR Aquatech admin team so that you can complete all your requirements before the eagles nest. A reminder to everyone to please book your spot for the 4IR Aquatech podcast. This podcast is dedicated to you and your entrepreneurial journey and experiences. Thank you to everyone who has already booked their space and who has already had the podcast. 
If you would like a one-on-one -on -one with one of our masterclass speakers, please send your request to hello at 4iraquatics.org. These one-on-ones will be taking place during our Entrepreneurship Month, November. Speaking of Entrepreneurship Month, please get yourselves ready for this awesome month, which will be dedicated to you, the entrepreneur. It's jam-packed with everything entrepreneurship, so get ready. That's it from me, everybody. See you guys later. Bye. Beautiful stuff. And now for the vote of thanks, uh, Dashan, Munsami, please take it away for us. Hi, everyone. I'd just like to say thank you on behalf of all of our colleagues in the group. I think it's been a very insightful lesson today, and uh, I think it's given us a lot to think about. Um, I think flexibility and adaptability is a very important factor in, in innovation. And I think sometimes when we look at innovation, we tend to overthink it. And, you know, it's, it's as simple as just using existing information and existing systems in a new application. You know, sometimes we just overcomplicate things and set ourselves up for failure. Um, yeah, and I think, uh, you know, being able to adapt and, and view your solutions in different perspectives is very uh, important because, you know, sometimes we can have the most innovative idea that works perfectly, but we've got the wrong approach and it will, um, you know, result in us Hi, my name is Lucky Diderio. I'm an entrepreneur, strategist, and investor, the founder of ICRD Group, the company behind the 4IR Aquatech Accelerator Program. In 2018, when South Africa celebrated Nelson Mandela's centenary, as a company, we sat down to say, how can we celebrate this amazing milestone in our country's history? And we decided to develop and conceptualize the 4IR Aquatech Accelerator, a sector specific program that seeks to fast track sustainable solutions to Africa's pressing water, food, and energy nexus challenges. Annually, we invite solutions across the four corners of our country to participate in this awesome program that seeks to identify, support, fund, and upscale a new generation of data-driven solutions to water, food, and energy nexus challenges. Join us in building sustainable strategies for Africa's rural and urban communities. Thank you.